Thank you. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm going to present here a very specific case study in Northwest uh, Spain uh, that is part of a wider project um, we developed at Durham University for the last couple of years. Um, so the, the context of this uh, initiative, as we'll see, um, first of all, we're facing the problem of coastal erosion and sea level rise on the Iberian Atlantic side. Uh, the main problem, as for other projects we've been uh, seeing here today, so this is the absence of a dedicated research or heritage management strategy in some of the countries we are dealing with. Um, as well as we saw for Ireland, uh, there's a lack of economic and human resources in Spain, uh, Portugal, and other countries at the moment. Um, I'd like to underline the, 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 the human resource side of it, uh, because of course it's not all about money, uh, it's most, mostly about people. Uh, to give you an idea of uh, how things are going uh, at this time in Spain, uh, when I joined uh, in 2009 the Institute of Heritage Sciences uh, in Galicia, in the northwest of Spain, uh, we were 45 people working there. Uh, when I left the department in 2013, there were 20 of them, now there are only 13. Uh, so that's how uh, research networks are suffering from economic crisis in some parts of Europe. Uh, of course, there's extreme urgency in dealing with this uh, climate change associated uh, uh, erosion of sites like coastal, coastal areas in, in the Atlantic Europe. So the, the very specific case study I'm showing you here today is a very small island in uh, Galicia, located in the uh, Arosa area. Um, and the striking thing of this small island is that in just a uh, you know, very small surface, we have a lot of archaeological sites uh, dating from the uh, Neolithic and Bronze Age. Um, I have to say that the, the, during the prehistoric time, this was a peninsula linked to the main uh, continental uh, area. Uh, so what we have here is uh, no less than five megalithic chambers uh, two kists, Bronze Age, uh, sorry, two Bronze Age kists, uh, and one Bronze Age uh, palace soil. Uh, most of the, them are being eroded. Um, so this is really an entire cultural landscape at risk, uh, but it's also a natural landscape at risk. Uh, and I, I think this is another side of the problem that we need to develop further. Uh, when we're dealing with uh, climate change, archaeology, and cultural heritage, is to link the cultural and the natural heritage uh, in our discussion. Uh, so what, what you see here, uh, I'll come back to that later, uh, some of the monuments, this is one of the Bronze Age kists, the other one was destroyed a couple of years ago. Um, this is one of the megalithic chambers, uh, a detail of the kist, and one of the uh, uh, megalithic chambers, one of the most important of them, that was still standing in 2011 and was destroyed uh, at some point of the uh, um, uh, winter, no, not sorry, no winter, uh, spring, I think, 2013. And the, the, the palace soil. Uh, the, the important thing also with this context is that uh, northwest Spain it has very acidic soil, so preservation of organic, macro-organic uh, remains uh, is not possible. So here we have really very important proxies for understanding uh, prehistoric occupation of the whole region. Um, as I said, the, the project I was developing at Durham University uh, consisted of a series of methodologies to preserve and record uh, coastal archaeological sites at risk in North Spain, Western France, and the Alps of Sicily in Southwest Britain. Um, so uh, uh, we began this project in May 2013 uh, in order to develop uh, methodologies with uh, modern uh, structure promotion uh, photogrammetry and some laser scanning, uh, as we saw right now for only here. So uh, during and even before we started this project at Durham, 
um, there was a growing public concern uh, about this particular island. Uh, so, a lot of local initiatives, uh, in fact, uh, local people were, were uh, some of the first in warning about the situation of the erosion of the coastal sites and the natural heritage of this site. Um, so, um, well, they've been doing things like um, swimming races from the continent to the island, uh, racing boats, uh, uh, panels, I mean, posters, uh, a lot of press releases were uh, launched uh, before and, and during our project, and there's still, uh, there's still a huge public concern about the situation of these archaeological sites. Uh, I have to say that the island is quite isolated, but it is a place that is really visited <coughs> during the summer because it's, it's like a small paradise in the middle of, uh, of the rear. Um, so there was also a lot of uh, concern about uh, visitors coming to the island and uh, contributing to the erosion of the sites and the natural heritage. Uh, so one very interesting example of this public concern on the island is this. Um, so this is a, a local uh, music group, not local, it's, it's Galician, so it's a regional group uh, that has released a new album in 2014. And one of the songs was dedicated to the island and specifically to the local sites in the island. Um, and an interesting aspect of it is that they refer as it as uh, the island of death. Um, so why this idea of the island of death? First of all, because, um, well, of course, there were funerary sites, most of them, and people began uh, seeing uh, press releases with the finding of bones, tombs, the, the, the Bronze Age case, etc. So that was related to the dead. But I think that's a very interesting uh, sociologic aspect here, is that uh, in that Spanish region, uh, the idea of the dead linked to the sea uh, is deeply uh, stuck in, in, the, in, in, the, I mean, in the society. And one of the developments of the project I want to start now is to uh, make contact with uh, an anthropologist colleague in, in Santiago de Compostela to try to uh, further investigate this, this link between the sociological concept of death and how the local uh, inhabitants have uh, understood the whole process of uh, discovery and destruction of archaeological sites within this island. So, um, so we had the project, we knew about the public concern and all the problems it was uh, creating. So we decided to, uh, as part of the project, begin a crowdsourcing initiative uh, to recover information uh, of this uh, island in, in northwest Spain. Um, so how do we understand this, this question? So uh, local communities, they have an interest in heritage preservation they have a concern about climate change, consequences and effects, and they are mostly permanently on the area of interest. As I say, in this case, it's more complex because uh, it's not an easy, there's no way, any easy access to the island. As researchers, we have the same interest. We have projects and initiatives, but we are unable to stay permanently uh, in the area of interest. So, as I said, the project was well, that, 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 the project at Durham was uh, based on monitoring from photographs and structure from motion photography. So one idea was um, to recover image archives from local people, to engage in dialogue with them, and try to um, create something more global together. So the idea was to get a database uh, on, on people contributing to the project, an image archive, um, a longer term analysis of, of the erosion of, of the island, uh, because as I said, the project began in 2013, but the sites were known, um, I mean, the, those that were eroding uh, most quickly were known since 2011. Uh, a more participant-based science, and the question if we could 3D model 
some of the sites that were eroding or even destroyed from the ancient image archives using modern uh, photogrammetry methods in order to integrate them into the project, uh, monitoring project that I said. So the idea was to obtain the images dating prior to 2013 when the project began uh, to provide answers and a visibility to this public concern and interest on the heritage and to integrate the public into the research process and outcomes. Uh, so for this we used several forms. We asked people to uh, fill a couple of forms concerning the, um, uh, the date of the photographs, the camera that they used, etc. Uh, we used social networks and a couple of websites, a, a blog in uh, WordPress and this history pin project where we were um, publishing pictures uh, from the sites. Our own picture was also some picture that the people sent us. Um, so we have so far collected 677 images. And there you see the, the, the dates where images were taken. Uh, the most interesting thing is that we even have photographs from 1990 uh, because some archaeologists were excavating a couple of sites uh, in the late 80s and early 90s. So we now have a quite good database uh, of images from 1990 until 2013, plus all the photographs we've been compiling ourselves on the project from 2013 until now. Uh, we have some gaps, however, uh, of the years. But overall, this is a very good image database with a lot of information. Uh, so, considering the... Of course, we ask people to send us photographs, not only from the archaeological sites, but also from the whole uh, island. Uh, because there's also a, a very... This, this area here, everything is, is a dune that is being eroded very, very fast as well. So we hope also to understand a little bit how this whole uh, uh, area developed and your oh, sorry. So 7% of the photographs are from Monument 3, that you see here. 26% of Monument 4, we see negative monument here. And 39% from Monument 5, that, as I said before, was destroyed in 2013. Um, so this is quite interesting, as we will see later. Uh, that we have quite a lot of photographs from this site. So, to, just to take some examples of uh, the image database we're building and how is it contributing to our research. Uh, here are a couple of photographs from the 1990s that were sent to us uh, by the former excavator of the site. Uh, the interesting thing is that Monument 3 is not this one. Well, it's not this one. Was another one. Actually, Monument 3 was here, but it wasn't still visible at that time. And this is how it looked like in 2011, 13, and 14. Similarly, Monument 4 has suffered from really very, very uh, critical destruction in the last 10 years. Um, this is how it looked like in 2005, 2011. Uh, the situation was so difficult, I mean, so hazardous, that um, the environmental ministry installed this wall defense here in Prodway. And as you see, in 2014, the whole base has already disappeared. So, of course, this has uh, slowed the uh, erosion process, but this defense will not stop the site from being destroyed. And Monument 5, as I said, destroyed uh, and sequence of its uh, evolution. Um, so to answer the other question uh, we said, well, one of the things we're doing with these photographs is to try to 3D model from ancient Imersa archives. Uh, so I did some previous tests with photographs dating from the 1950s, uh, 1950s excavation in France, and from 1912 uh, photographs of a megalithic monument in, in West France as well. And I was quite confident that if we had a very, I mean, a quite good 
um, amount of photographs, we could 3D model them with the modern software. Uh, so uh, what I did was to uh, compile uh, photographs we received from this crowdsourcing initiative and to model Monument 4 as it was in 2011. And what you see here is Monument 4 from the actual photographs we are taking under control conditions as part of the project at uh, So what does this mean? This means that we can now compare and perform a quantitative analysis at the very small scale uh, of the site, archaeological site, and try to understand how it evolved. We are now dealing with matching these 3D models together to perform this. But most importantly, as I said, this is Monument 5 that was destroyed. Um, so the fact that we have been able to recreate the 3D model of it, it means that we can now understand the site uh, without going to the site because it's no longer there. Sorry. Um, so I think th this has a great potential for um, the study of uh, destroyed archaeological sites not only threatened by climate change, but, you know, for sites that were, uh, for instance, excavated a long time ago. Uh, the interesting thing is that um, some photographs for this site were taken by archaeologists in 2011, which means that they cared to put scale. So if we have scale, we have measurements, we can uh, um, scale the model, we can perform a quantitative analysis of it to obtain uh, a map, a plan, whatever. So I, I really think this, this is a very, very interesting thing for the future of uh, destroyed archaeological sites. Um, so, of course, this is a very, very local case study. Uh, but as we are all discussing here today, <coughs> this is a global concern. Um, so uh, we perform an analysis of uh, how, I mean, where the people that sent us photographs came from. Um, as you see, there nobody, but this is the actual area where the, um, where the island is. Most of the people that sent us photographs were living in other inner areas. Of course, this, most people migrate from the coastal area to the more continental side of it and because of the employment. Uh, facilities. Indeed, that, 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 that was a, a process that occurred for most islands uh, in this part of, um, of Spain, that they were really mm, abandoned uh, something in the late 60s and 70s of the 20th century. Uh, and well, this is the, the, the administrative boundaries of the region, uh, with more people, of course, coming from, from this area of uh, La Coruña in, in, in Galicia. So, as I said before in the discussion, uh, one of the things uh, that we, we have seen that was really, really interesting was uh, the local, regional, and even national interest the project um, received from the media. Um, through the website, we've been posting a lot of information. And since we posted the information, almost instantly we received phone calls from the local press and so on. So that, I think this is uh, something we, we need to analyze further. Um, but the, the most surprising analysis is this. Uh, this is the uh, website uh, we had in uh, WordPress. And of course, we have most of the visits are coming from Spain, um, a lot from the United Kingdom, because the project, as I said, was based at Durham. But also, we have an interesting amount of visits from the United States. Uh, we know that some of the visits, uh, for instance, one visit we received from the Philippines was because one of the relatives of the person who lived in the Philippines is Galician and hope, so he, he sent information so when in the Philippines accessed the site. So what, what I mean with this is that even at a very, very, very local scale of analysis, as this case study is, the problem, the, the, the question is of global interest. So, just to sum up, um, local communities as the first concern by climate change is coastal, coastal erosion effects. Um, we need to integrate 
these communities into the research process and provide them with the outcomes and information of the, of the project. So what we are doing now is we are going to make available 3D models on the website so everybody can access that information uh, from the internet. And so again, this initiative and blog and, and social networks have served to engage the dialogue to provide answers to the people. And um, with the original 3D modeling initiative, that I, I think is, is really the future of some of this research. Um, again, just to finish, local case study, regional interest, but global implications and applications. So thank you very much.